So hello and welcome to Tracking Student Learning Outcomes in Blackboard. This is an area of growing interest on our campus and really at universities, certainly nationwide and internationally as well to a certain extent, where we're looking in more depth at what our students are actually learning and achieving in our courses and more than that, also looking to, to offer some evidence or some proof of what students are learning. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center here at Northern Illinois University. And I encourage you to reach out after this session if you have any questions on this or really any matter relating to teaching or teaching with technology. Today I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of what um, what it looks like to track student learning outcomes and to, to gather evidence against those, and particularly what that looks like in Blackboard, since that is the focus of today. So we'll talk about how to add alignments to outcomes within Blackboard, and then how to evaluate students against those, and at the very end, we'll spend some time talking about adding custom goals into Blackboard in order to make this work. But that part of the process is actually the one that the least number of people will be engaged in because once the goals are set up once, then everyone across the institution can use them. So we'll, we'll save that one for last, focus more on using these first. To start with though, it's important to understand the concept of alignment. So in a, a well-aligned course by uh, instructional design principles, the learning objectives form the foundation of the course, the, the bedrock on which the rest of the elements of the course are laid. So from there, I usually focus next actually on the assessments as the capstone, as the, the crowning achievement of the course, so that those are directly related to the learning objectives, so that what I'm measuring on my assessments are, is actually what I claim that students will learn or what I've been asked to teach within this course. From there then, the course content, the activities, and in fact the tools or strategies that I use as part of the, the course come into play to align between and connect those objectives with the assessments. When I'm looking at a particular strategy or activity or, or textbook, I'm not only evaluating its quality and merit as an entity in and of itself, but thinking about how that actually relates to my objectives or to my assessments and whether it's effective in, in providing support to scaffold and build students from the beginning of the course to achieving those objectives. Beyond that, we can also look at program alignment. So a course alignment looks discreetly within a single course, but overall, any degree program should be aligned uh, beyond an individual course. So here, each of these little structures represents an individual course, and I'm showing how each course is aligned to the overarching, or, or really here, the <laughs> underlying student learning outcomes for the program as a whole, or uh, this might be to the baccalaureate standards, if you're looking at a student's general education curriculum, or potentially to other professional standards or accreditation standards that your program is held accountable to. Uh, for example, um, we've been working a lot with our physical therapy program, and they have an external accreditation that provides specific standards for what content must be taught in their program in order for them to maintain their accreditation with that professional association. So they've gone through a process of mapping each course, and in fact, in many cases, each assessment to a specific professional standard from that outside agency. So this diagram just represents those connections. So I'm gonna pause for a moment to turn it over to you. From your perspective and in your courses, what particular learning outcomes, professional standards, or accreditation standards are you aware of that your courses have to be connected to? You can uh, use your microphone if you'd like to speak up, or if you want to type it into the text chat, go right ahead. 
Jennifer, you mentioned quality matters. Quality matters is a great example of um, of a set of standards. It's not related to the the content of your course so much as it is to the the structure of your course. But it's very important to make sure you have those connections in place. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, the Illinois Professional Teaching Standards. That's a great example where you might have each course aligned to a particular um, single standard or multiple standards, most likely. And Erica, in public management, you have ethics standards. Of course, it's very, very critical, more so than ever, in public management uh, to be related to, to ethics. I believe also, Erica, that you have, is it eight or 12 uh, program outcomes or standards that your course is aligned to? I know I've worked some with your department on I think partially the portfolio that students work on in order to align those 12 competencies. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. That's also a great point. Sometimes these are called learning outcomes or standards, competencies. Um, there are a variety of different terms that are used for this the same thing. I personally am using objectives to refer to courses and outcomes to refer to those broader um, more system-wide or systemic pieces like uh, student learning outcomes for your degree program or professional standards, accreditation standards. I'm kind of lumping those all into outcomes, uh, but later we'll pivot a little bit and we'll start calling them goals because that's what Blackboard refers to them as. But outcomes, competency, standards are all very similar in the jargon because we all use them in slightly different ways. But the first step is identifying what those are that you need to actually gather data for. So the next step now is looking at the actual student achievement. And I really think the most important thing about this approach is looking at course embedded assessments. So in a lot of cases, the Illinois Professional Teaching Standards is a great example again, there are separate external assessments of those outcomes where at some point students have to show that they themselves can achieve those, whether that's through a separate assessment, a portfolio review. Uh, there are a variety of ways that, that students have to do that in order to achieve a licensure. But as our, as a higher institution, higher ed institution, we also have to be able to demonstrate that we are helping students achieve those. So when we can use course embedded assessment, I think it, it gains us a lot of efficiency over having students do a separate thing in order to uh, achieve those comparisons and gather that data. So here I have a single course where students take a quiz. I know that that quiz assesses one of my program outcomes. So I have that highlighted here as one association. But then I can gather data on how students have achieved on that outcome. So I'm essentially, I could directly connect this quiz to this outcome table, but I'm mediating that through this um, student learning outcome and alignment in between. And it seems odd and silly to do that for a single assessment, but when we add in that in a single course, we may have multiple assessments that all measure the same outcome or the same objective, then it begins to make a little more sense. Where now, student achievement here at the bottom isn't based on a single assessment, but rather on two of them. And by using a system that can track the student learning outcomes, I can easily combine data from two or more assessments when I'm trying to determine how students are performing on a single outcome. And then of course, it can become much more complex. This is still even a fairly simple system where I've divided this course assessment row into two separate courses. There's a course here at the top that uses uh, some quizzes or tests. It has two assignments and two uh, discussion boards. The second course has one discussion board, two tests, and one assignment. And in each case, these are all aligned to one or more learning outcomes. It might have, uh, in the case of a fairly small assignment, like this discussion board, it might only align to one. But in something larger, like a test, maybe this is a midterm, 
it aligns to several of those. And then notice that for each outcome, this one has three different assessments, uh, a test and a here, an assignment, and a discussion board that are all assessing one outcome. And I can look at student achievement on that single outcome as well from across all of these courses and all of the different assessments that are being used. Uh, because of this, then, I can get a, a picture of how all of my students are performing on each of these required outcomes. Because of that, the, the system in Blackboard, because you have to build in so much structure, it's really best used when you need that sort of heavy data gathering. So we recommend it more for alignment with program-wide or uh, accreditation types of standards as opposed to individual course objectives. I don't mean to discourage you from doing that because you certainly can. You can create your individual course objectives, align your course against those. But it is a fairly heavy um, burden of, of creating and maintaining those in order to gather data from just your course. Um, but it's ideal for these bigger uh, situations where you might need to gather more information on how students are achieving against program-wide outcomes from multiple courses and across different assessments. This allows us then to gather this data for from a course, so it's course-based assessment, but we're doing it campus-wide or department-wide or program-wide to determine student achievement. So let's look at what this looks like in Blackboard. There are three different components, as I'm going to look at how you actually set up the alignment structure. Then we'll look at how you evaluate the achievement against that structure. And I'll close out by actually circling back to look at how you create those individual goals. So adding alignments in Blackboard is the, um, the key task that you have to do that an individual faculty member does within their course. And these alignments, show how an individual piece of your course connects to those broader outcomes. So here I have within my course a document. This happens to be content, not an assessment, but it works the same way either way. So I have a piece of content that I say connects to a particular alignment. And I find that by using that round drop down arrow that seems like you use for everything in Blackboard, if you click that drop down, you'll notice you have probably have never used it, but there's an option called Add Alignments. And this Add Alignments piece is what uh, is Blackboard structure for connecting a piece of content or assessment within a course to those broader outcomes. So we're going to add an alignment. And then from adding an alignment, I get a pop-up window that shows me all of the goals that are available in Blackboard. So to the very left here in section one, I can choose a variety of different filters to let me find the particular uh, associations I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm pretending like this is a physical therapy course. So I found my goals for the um, doctorate in physical therapy. And then here to the right are the individual uh, accreditation standards. These are from their uh, professional association called CAPTI that provides their accreditation. This is actually an older version of them, but the, the uh, process remains the same. And then I can select from here which of these standards I want to align to my to that particular element of my course. So I can choose one, I can choose multiple. Note that if you do choose multiple, if this were say an assignment and I said this assignment covered uh, all three of these here at the top. Let me just draw a little check. Say one, two, three. When I grade this as an instructor, as a faculty member, the grade that I give will contribute to the data on all three of these standards. So it's important to consider your granularity when you are, are creating these alignments because this one active alignment then will say this, the student's performance on this item should be used as data for each of these three standards. 
Then the uh, standard is listed here where students can, where you can see it connected to your uh, assessment or content. By default, it is unavailable to students. That's what that uh, no symbol here means. But if you click that, you can then choose to make that visible to students so that when they see this in their course, they'll see the exact same thing where they'll see the, the course elements such as your assessment, your assignment maybe, and the standard that it relates to. By doing that, you actually raise a lot of awareness for your students on how they're achieving against each of these standards. And in a, in a field such as maybe in, in teaching with the IPTS standards, where students will have to com eventually complete a, an assessment themselves to show that they are achieving these, it may be helpful to actually let them see those. In other cases, if you're interested more in the background data collection, you probably don't need to make those, a vis make those visible to students. So you can add these alignments in a lot of places. Uh, Mike, yes, do you have a question? Yeah, quick question. So let's say if there's a set of standards that are not in Blackboard, is it possible to get them added? It is, and that's the last thing that we're covering okay. today. Yep. Okay. Absolutely is. There are most of the standards that uh, might be used are not currently in Blackboard. Uh, Blackboard provided uh, way back when this tool was added in, I want to say it was 2012-ish was the time frame. Uh, they made available a set, the, the old accreditation standards from NCATE, and most of them are actually the K-12 standards from NCATE. Of course, none of those apply anymore. We're in an entirely different world of pre-service teacher preparation and K-12 uh, standard alignment for that matter. So the standards that you see are, are likely outdated, uh, but any standards can be added. Absolutely, we'll talk about that. So these alignments then can be added to elements of content. You would do this if you needed to run a report to show how your course was uh, preparing students, if you needed to be able to identify, for example, that you have appropriate content or units, maybe you created a folder for a unit, um, to show that the course materials and the course activities are addressing those outcomes you would align to content. If all you need to do is gather data against how students are performing on those outcomes, then you would align to assessments. And I essentially here just want to show that uh, you can align to, I think, every single type of assessment in Blackboard, whether that is an assignment, if you have students writing a paper, you can align tests, you can align individual test questions even. So if, uh, as opposed to adding maybe six standards, six outcomes aligned to a single test, it would be much more helpful from a data collection perspective to actually align the individual test questions to the outcomes that they measure. You can also align discussion boards if you're using more of that um, discussion-based activity and interaction as an assessment. And I think one of my favorites is you can align a grade center column as well. So if you aren't having students turn something in via Blackboard, maybe you have them doing a group presentation or this is an observation of them in practice, you can create a grade center column and align that column to an outcome. Then whatever grade you enter into that column becomes the, the data against student achievement. So there's, there's no need, there's no requirement that students turn something in via Blackboard, but the, the performance data, essentially the student grade, uh, has to be in the grade center in some way. I think the, the best way to do this in many cases, particularly for open-ended uh, projects or papers, is to align a rubric. Now again, if you aren't familiar with rubrics, I'm not going to go in much detail with them here. Uh, but the Blackboard rubric tool is, is fabulous. And we call them generally interactive rubrics. That's the key word to mean from us, at least, from faculty development, to mean we're talking about Blackboard rubrics as opposed to rubrics in general, because we do have workshops and resources on both. But the, the interactive rubrics in Blackboard lets you create uh, an electronic version of your rubric with whatever rows and columns and grading system you need. 
then you can actually click on the rubric when you're grading a student's paper to select each level of achievement. You're in total control as to whether or not students can see that. I, I always advocate for whenever possible, letting students see their results from the rubric, uh, particularly even seeing the rubric before they have to submit the, the assignment so that they can know how they'll be graded. But you're in control of what they see on the rubric and when. And then you can grade it, as I said, by clicking the columns. And then Blackboard tabulates a grade, passes all of that information directly back to students that they can see in my grades. So it takes a little bit of time, just a little bit of time, to set those up when you need to start grading or when you're setting up your course. And then uh, saves you so much time in grading where you're not you can write fewer comments to students and you don't have to create separate Word documents and email those or post them into the Grade Center back to students. Uh, you can give really in-depth feedback with the interactive rubric tool and it's much easier than uh, other methods you might use for that. So you can align a rubric. For example, um, I have a discussion rubric. If I had a single outcome on, uh, say, collaborative work, or collegiality, I might align this entire rubric to that single outcome. In order to get here, um, you would go to your, your rubrics. So actually, this should be, this is a mistake. This should be down here. My apologies. In the control panel, you would click on rubrics. Then you would click uh, the, again, that ubiquitous edit <laughs> drop down box and choose Add Alignments. But as I said, you can also, let me move this back down, it's supposed to be on rubrics. You can also align individual rows of a rubric. So if you have a content rubric that maybe um, covers several different outcomes all on the same rubric, for example, if you have um, standards that look at professional presentation, but also look at um, various facets of articulation of how you speak or how you present, as well as standards on the content of the presentation to show that they understand the topic they're presenting on. You can align each row of the rubric for so that you get the accurate data you need against each element of those standards. To do that, again, you access rubrics from the control panel. Instead of choosing to add alignments, you edit the rubric. And then you add alignments within each row. So again, every time you're trying to, to do this, you're looking for that add alignments option. And it might be at the, the granular level on a whole test or on a whole rubric, or uh, it might be more specific on elements of a rubric, the different rows, or uh, the different questions on a test, or a specific assignment, a specific discussion board. Um, the way that the Blackboard data collection works, by the way, is it always chooses the most specific element as the one that it counts for data collection. So hypothetically, if I had a rubric and I aligned a single row of the rubric, but I also aligned the rubric overall, what Blackboard's going to count is this one down here. It's going to count the individual row alignments because that's more specific, it gives you more granular, more accurate data than the, the overall rubric alignment would. So what that means is you can, you can add multiple alignments this way, but then know that the data collection is going to come from those more specific elements. The same is true of a test. If you align a test overall, but also individual test questions. Blackboard uses the data from those individual questions as opposed to the entire test. I do um, highly recommend looking at thinking about this ahead of time. So you really think about what, what data you're trying to collect or if you're doing this in order to provide information to students on how the course uh, is addressing those outcomes as opposed to a data collection. Think about your goals and what specific elements of your course you want to align, whether that's specific content types or um, the different assessments, what types of assessments you're going to be aligning, 
and, and have a little bit of a plan in place. You can go and align all sorts of things and then after the fact adjust it. My, uh, again, the best thing about this is if you're trying to gather data, you can add alignments at any time. So you can actually add an alignment to an old course where all of the work has been graded and you'll be able to gather data out of that. So if your goal is data, you can do sort of a post hoc gathering of that. If your goal is com communicating to students, of course, you have to do that while students are there and can see it. Uh, but you can think about that ahead of time and add those in then as you go. And the key, wherever you are in the course, is add alignments. That's going to open up that panel where you can choose the, the specific standards that you're looking for. So once you have your course aligned, you would grade your assessments just as normal. The beauty of this is that it is that course embedded assessment. So you do more work up front to align the course, but you don't have to do separate or secondary assessment in order to uh, do your, to gather your data against those goals. Once you've graded it, that's when you can start pulling the, the, the broader data against student performance. So just as a quick reflection, you obviously know how students have done on an individual assignment, but how do you know that students have actually met the course objectives? Or do you know if students have met the course objectives? And the same would go if you're involved more at the program level. How do you know that the students graduating from your degree have met your program outcomes? Any thoughts? You ask them, that's good. It's it's great way to get feedback on, on student achievement, either at the, the course level or the program level. Have you, have you learned what we said you would learn? Um, Jen Howard mentioned the, the Quality Matters system earlier. We actually do that in the workshop where we have objectives at the beginning and at the end, we ask, have you met these? Do you have any questions on one of these still that we didn't cover or, um, I believe they ask it on the follow-up evaluation even. Did you, here was what <laughs> you were told you would learn. Did you actually learn those? And we find quite often that's, that's one of the ways that we gather feedback on those. Fortunately, again, with the system in place, you can gather more uh, quantitative data if that's what you're after, particularly if that's what your accreditors are after. Okay, reflection. So not not just even an impromptu asking, but Erica, you said for the, the public administration, you offer them the 12 competencies and they write how they will apply them in future jobs. That's great. That's, that's both uh, backward looking. So they have to essentially assume that they've achieved those, but then look forward at how those are going to be useful and help them continue in their career. Excellent. I, I ask students all the time for <laughs> for them to tell me how they'll use something because that way they can't complain that they won't. Soon as soon as someone starts, I was a math teacher, by the way, before I came back into faculty development. I taught math uh, in high schools and at community college, and that's the number one question in any math course. When are we going to use this? You tell me. So fortunately in Blackboard, when you've done all of the effort to align your course, you can gather some quantitative data on how students are doing against your objectives. The first way you can do that is with a course performance report. This will tell you within a single course, how are students doing against anything, any of the standards that are aligned in their course. So if you haven't looked at it before, it's under evaluation, course reports. And then you'll, the one that you want to look at right now is course performance. You'll notice right above it here, this course coverage report, this will actually tell you uh, what elements of a course are aligned to the different standards. So if you need to, to verify and validate that the course is aligned correctly and completely, you can run the course coverage report. But to see how students have, uh, have achieved against those standards, those outcomes, you would use the course performance report. So you click the drop down and choose run. When you get the report then, it has three sections. The first section looks at the course overall. So all of the students in aggregate, how are they performing on those assessments that are aligned? 
we aren't at this level yet looking at specific outcomes. We're just looking generally at those outcomes that, at those assessments that are aligned to outcomes, how are students performing? So we can see in this course, I set a fairly arbitrary performance target of 85%. Uh, that's a selection you make when you run the report. My course average is 64. So there's clearly an achievement issue here. And then I can see that generally students are doing better on assignments than they are on tests. Uh, and other here is measuring the rubrics actually from the assignment. So it's essentially the same, very similar score, not exactly the same. I can, if I wanted to dig in more deeply by category of assessment, so if I wanted to see more detail on individual assignments or on specific test questions, I could click these links on the interactive version of the report to see more detail. But instead, I'd rather scroll down, where in the next section, I can see the overview of students. So I can see, again, at my 85% target here, which, again, I chose arbitrarily, I can see that none of my students are actually achieving it, nor are they in this 5% uh, plus or minus window uh, range around my targets. I have one student who's close, and then several others who are, are unfortunately performing worse. So again, this is on all of the assessments that are aligned to any standard, any outcome. But it gives me a sense that generally, my students are not doing well against these outcomes overall. But again, I can scroll down further, and I can get a better, more granular view. So here are the specific standards, the outcomes that I have aligned in my course. And I can see this first one, actually, overall, they're doing pretty well. So I have an 85.7% overall average across all of my students for this first goal. And so far, there's an assignment that no one has turned in yet, and because it's not due yet. And there were three test questions that were measuring this. So those three test questions, they're averaging 85% on. So that's good. I can also see that here, uh, outcome standard four is the one they're doing the worst on. Uh, there were two test questions, and the average is 42%. That's, that's not so good. Um, and then I have... A few of these others, for example, the assignment that aligns to standard eight, they're only at about a 79% on, and the rubric that I used to measure standard nine, they're getting 76% on. Um, these orange exclamation marks are showing me which ones are flagged as not being within my the range around my target, and then there's one, let me clear off all my marks, there's one standard here, number six, where so far there's just no data. So I have no submissions yet against this one and Blackboard can't calculate a value. At any time, so because this is an interactive report, if I wanted to see more about this standard four, where students are, are achieving poorly, I can click on standard four and that will show me each student and their performance against this, um, this standard. So dig in more deeply to see this particular standard's achievement. So again, this is all via the, the course performance report within your course. So as I said, it aggregates the data across these three different sections. We looked at each one of those. By default, it displays as an HTML report in your browser. You can download it as a PDF. Um, it loses some of its interactive ability at that point. But if you wanted to, if you had a view you liked and you wanted to um, be able to send that off to someone else, for example, that's a little bit easier way to do it. I have found for some reason, rubric data does not work very well within the course performance report. So this is one example where, um, Unfortunately, Blackboard isn't aggregating that into this course performance report. Fortunately, there's another way you can gather data. 
that is the goal performance dashboard. This is brand new. We um, have only had access to it since May. And this is actually Blackboard's first attempt at uh, putting pulling pieces together within Blackboard for competency-based education, where not only would you measure student achievement against competencies, but you would also restructure the way that the course is taught so that students could test out of a portion of the course. Uh, courses under CBE or competency-based education are generally self-paced. Students then uh, complete assessments and only usually approach the content when they, they need that in order to support achieving an assessment. But the goal is, is less about teaching and more about outcomes. So far, no one at NIU has um, put expressed an interest in this. And I think that that's very clear from the type of education we offer at NIU. But there may be some courses where, where that's appropriate. And it certainly has been appropriate for other institutions. So this goal performance dashboard, as I said, is a first step towards enabling that type of uh, course delivery. But we can also use it for non-competency-based courses just to be able to access the performance information that we're interested in. So this is under course tools again in the control panel. And the way that you view this, again, once you click to goal performance, is you click on one of the students in the course in order to view their performance. So I'm going to choose Louisa Alcott. Here I can see each of the assessments. This is a, um, a slightly different course, a different scenario for um, her testing. But I can see for uh, standard one here, 5.1, she's at the distinguished level, meaning she's achieving this quite highly. Uh, and so far, the only data that it's pulling from is this one test. There were three questions on that test, and she completed it April 5th. When she completes the second assessment, I would be able to see her achievement on that over here as well. And these would be averaged together in order to adjust her overall uh, performance on this particular standard. I can see, however, that on three and four, she's at the, the needs improvement level. This is defined as being below 50%. That's definitely, in my opinion, needs improvement. And again, I could see more details if I, I clicked the, the caret here to expand this down. I can also, once I'm at this view, I could click on the Blackboard NG review title here and see more details for her on her achievements on those three questions within this quiz. So the goal performance dashboard gives you a per student view of their achievement. And again, this one is, is more reliable. It pulls the information from any assessment that you have aligned. Uh, Mike, the 50% is hard coded. Uh, I believe there's a way to change it, but I have not found it yet, to be honest. Um, but it's mostly just to raise a flag uh, on that visual color scheme. So it, it doesn't actually, other than giving a, a visual indication, it doesn't actually trigger anything else. Uh, so again, all of those assessments uh, feed into this goal performance dashboard, including rubrics this time, which is marvelous. But the more powerful thing about this is you can also make this available to students so that they can view their progress. This is similar to letting them see my grades, where they can actually see their grades, but they could view their progress against individual uh, standards as well by going to tools within the course menu and goal performance. If you don't align anything in your course, students can still go to this, but they will see that there's just no data to be seen. However, from a program perspective, the best thing about this is you can now aggregate all of this information from all of the courses in order to get a, a better view of student performance. So I realize this is a terrible spreadsheet view, but this is what you get. So I can, uh, administrators can pull the data from the system to see now here I have standard 5.1 and I have 5.1 for each of the students that have submitted work against standard 5.1, and I have a 
final score for each of those students that shows me their achievements against this goal ID. So you do, again, see these performance levels as a row in the spreadsheet, um, it, or as a column, rather, in the spreadsheet. But that's, again, fairly easy to ignore because most of the time we're more focused on the actual data. So this is essentially the percentage that students are achieving on each of the individual goals. And you'll see that they're grouped here. So there's 5.1, here's 5.2, 5.3, etc. So we see each student and each goal that they've been aligned against. Once this is um, extracted from Blackboard, it's done as a CSV Excel file. So from here, then you can do whatever analysis you would like to, whether that's doing more analysis in Excel itself. If you to um, calculate you know, an average for all of these students, you could do that. So all of our students are achieving at X percentage on the standard. Or if you needed to identify a cut value. So again, Mike, this is where in Blackboard, the cut value is um, set at, I believe, 80% and 50%. I'd have to verify that exactly. Um, for distinguished versus foundational versus needs improvement. but because you get this data as an Excel sheet then, you can set whatever cut uh, values you would like to, whether um, and however many you needed to, to be able to report back to uh, the university, the um, board of trustees then, as to your program achievement or to various accreditors as to your student achievement. Um, and as I said, it's a CSV, so you can do that in Excel, you could use, any number of other data tools that you, you're familiar with or comfortable with using. Uh, Mike, great question about um, if multiple assignments are tied to a single goal, how are they combined or averaged? What Blackboard's essentially doing is the computed score is just the sum of all of the scores. The possible score, again, is the sum of all of the possible points. And then they divide those to get a final score. So it's it's essentially just a straight um, straight sum and straight average of those uh, by, by weight. So if one course has an assignment that's worth 10 points and another has one that's worth 100, the 100-point assignment will bear more weight in the final calculation. It does um, point out, again, the, the importance of planning this out ahead of time. So it may require, well, it does require some extensive coordination among the faculty of a department, for example, in order to determine that the various assignments that are aligned the way that they want them to be would calculate the way that they want them to. Otherwise, uh, at the very least, like I said here, this does give the ability to, um, to pull a score from across all of the different courses that these would be aligned in, not just a, a single course at a time. I hope that answered your question. I think we covered all this. Yep, OK. There is one oddity just for completeness, particularly for anyone who's watching the, uh, the archive who might not be at NIU and just wants to learn more about how this goal performance export works. So in Blackboard, when the system administrator runs this report, then um, it's actually exported as a JSON file, a JSON. Um, the best way we found to handle that is to convert it to a CSV. And then it does pull all of the goals in the system every time you run the goal performance export report. And in which case, at NIU, what we would do if um, Mike was looking for uh, all IPTS standards, we could pull just those out. Or if Mike was looking for a specific set of students, again, we could we could pull out just those students that you were you needed data for. So you don't get the the swamp of data from everything. You get the ones that you are particularly interested in. We are also exploring. I can't make any promises, but uh, our uh, development team and system administrators in Division of IT have been exploring whether they could build a better reporting tool 
so that we could customize where we could only pull data from a particular term, from particular courses, for example, or particular students even maybe. Uh, that, that's a proposal. I don't know how, um, how or when it would go forward. So again, it's, I'm laying it out there as a possibility and I, I hope it's something we can move forward with. But if there's any particular interest in that, then be sure to let me know, and we'll we'll put you on um, on the list essentially as one more reason why that this should go forward. So there are three different ways that you can look at the data that you get from aligning the course and then collecting uh, and then grading students. One is the course performance report, which will show you all of your students within that course. The goal performance uh, dashboard will show you information for individual students and their particular achievement. This data can be made visible to students. And the third one is the goal performance export, which allows you to aggregate the data for all students for all goals in all courses and has to be run by a Blackboard administrator, but I can tell you is a fairly easy thing to do. So we're happy to do that upon request and as needed. The last thing then that I save for last, because most faculty are going to be primarily working with phase one, aligning the courses, and potentially in phase two if they're looking at student achievement within an individual course. Um, the last thing that, needs, that you need to know about though is adding those custom goals in Blackboard. So Mike, this would answer your earlier question as to whether or not um, standards that are not currently in Blackboard could be added? The answer was absolutely, but once you've added them, everyone has access. So it's something where we're being a little more limited on how that happens, just to make sure that there's some quality control. And there will be far fewer people who are doing this, which is why I saved it for last. So to add custom goals, again, I want to, encourage you to consider it most for program or institutional level outcomes like accreditation standards or or program competencies uh, as Erica mentioned but it can be used for individual courses so if this requires that our division of IT grant you additional privileges in Blackboard uh, we created a custom role called goals manager that gives you access to the goals tool so you can request access by contacting us, and I'll put you in touch with our, um, our administrators in IT in order to get those privileges added to your account. We do this on a testing server. So once access has been granted, then uh, we'll direct you on how to log into our testing server. We do that, again, on a testing server so that you're not impacting the, the live courses. But that's where you can go to create the individual goals. And then one of our administrators in IT will export the goals from the testing server and import them into our live production server where live courses can have access to those. Again, this, this added layer is just to make sure that um, goals are entered correctly and then uh, they do a little bit of uh, cleaning the metadata, things that you can't even see when you're creating goals they can establish some of those parameters when they're importing them into the live production system. So when you're creating a goal on the goals manager, this is what you see. So here we have a, um, a set of goals. So the first step is actually adding a goal set. And we'll do this for you because we have some specific naming con conventions to follow. But a goal set is the large bucket of all of your goals, whether that's, again, competencies, standards, outcomes. Uh, within that, you add a category. You probably only have a single category, but you may have multiple. And that's something that we would talk to you about as you're getting ready to start these. When you add an individual goal, you would click Add Goal. And within there, then you have mostly what you need to enter is the actual text of the goal and establish a goal type. So a goal type is, um, again, is, is it an accreditation standard? Is it a program outcome? Is it a course objective? 
those types of categories are actually the goal types. Um, you also establish a goal ID, and we're using the same ID as a unique ID. That is so that in the back end, Blackboard knows what this, um, what this standard means. If you can't tell, this amounts to a lot of copying and pasting. <laughs> so if you have, uh, Mike, I think you said you had 140 uh, standards in the IPTS standards. This would require copying and pasting each one of them. I do believe that the IPTS standards are now in Blackboard. We had another user who was interested in um, aligning her course against them, and so she created them in order to be able to use them. So I think the IPTS standards are there. Many others, of course, are not there yet. But this, this brown box here is, is, would become your, your best friend for a while as you copy and paste the text of your goals into the system. It's a fairly straightforward process. Um, go back here for a second. Um, you can, by the way, nest these. So uh, here we have a 5.1. If there was a 5.1a, um, then what you would do is create what's called, oops, I did not erase that, not draw that correctly. You would create what's called a child goal so that essentially there's a, a hierarchy between these as well. So you can have just a straight list of goals, or you can, you can set up a, a structure where one is the, the parent goal and a second one becomes a child to be um, part of that broader goal. It's a very straightforward, if I have to admit, somewhat tedious process, which is why fortunately most people will not ever see this at the back end. Uh, if you are going to be creating goals, we would go through this together for the first few, actually, um, just to make sure you're on the right track, and then um, leave you to, to go ahead and enter all the rest of them. So in summary, kind of a big picture summary of the whole presentation, uh, the Blackboard Goals and Alignments is a great way to track student performance on the assessments in your course. It's a great way as well to communicate that alignment to your students. As we uh, just saw, you can create custom goals. So if you have standards or program outcomes or competencies that are not in Blackboard already, those can easily be added. If particularly for long sets like the IPTS, somewhat tediously added. Uh, then the within individual courses, the content and the assessments are aligned to those goals so that uh, the, the data and the connections are all forged. And then the assessment data from that can be gathered at the course level, the program level, or the university level. Uh, a great example of the university level is the, the baccalaureate outcomes are all in Blackboard. And so we're, we're hoping, we're working with um, the provost office to help them be able to gather some data on those, um, those goals if general education courses uh, started aligning some of those to those goals. Um, I will also point out before, because I always forget to put a bullet on here, all of this can be copied from one semester to another. So once you set up a course once, if you teach the course in uh, at least a similar way, when you copy the course from one semester to another, you can copy the alignment over as well. And then your, your new course will have all of them in place. And then you just have to worry about adding alignments to any changes you make if you, for example, add a new piece of content or, or change one article to another. Um, you can, you'll have to make those tweaks after you've made some revisions, but the, the bulk of it can all be copied from one to another. Oh, good, Eric, I'm glad that was <laughs> one of your questions. Yes, it would be a pain to have to do this every semester. Um, okay, so let me get to your earlier questions. If I understand it right, the goals should be aligned to the degree objectives or program outcomes. And for the goals of your course, you can create custom goals. Yes, as I said, it's, um, it seems to me, at least from my perspective, that this is a lot of work to go through in order to assess your course objectives. Uh, unless you need specific data, unless you're being asked for that, 
I would focus more on the, um, the degree objectives or program outcomes as being the, um, the better place to spend your effort. There's, there's no reason why other than the, the amount of effort that course objectives couldn't be used. Um, just again, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work for you to go through if you don't need that level of detail on the, the data side. Uh, but like I said, it's, that's not to say it can't be done, just that wasn't what it was designed for and uh, might not, it's not necessarily the best use of your time. But if you're interested, we can do it. <laughs> uh, so then Mike asks, if you align content to a goal, does it get ignored when creating the student performance reports? Yes, yeah, so the student performance report is only based on the actual assignments. But if I go back here for just a moment to um, the course performance report, if you've aligned content, then you can see it uh, here if you run a course coverage report. So the course coverage report shows how the content is aligned against the goals. The course performance report shows how the student achievement on the assessments connects to the goals. So you can, you can do both. You can align the content and the assessments. The content doesn't give you any data on the performance reports, but the assessments are reflected on the course coverage report where you'll see all of the um, assignments that were aligned to a various goal. The course coverage report is designed, as it even says here in the description, um, it includes the covered and gap values for the curricular areas. So if you had five standard, we'll use Erica, if you have 12 competencies and your course is supposed to cover all of those, once you've aligned your content and your assessments, the course coverage report can help you see that you actually only have content on 10 of the 12 and you have assessments on six of the 12, and that helps you identify, in Blackboard at least, where there might be gaps. Now, if that's particularly what you want to look at, I think, uh, again, there are easier ways to do that uh, with like a, a table, for example, in a Word document <laughs> in order to, to check to see where, if these are my competencies, I can list the content or the assessments that connect to each one, but, if you're going to use the, the goals and alignments here in Blackboard, this coverage report can help you identify that. It's also great if you're looking particularly at the data collection, it will help you see if that data collection is, is set up correctly or not. Uh, if you do need to drop off, I think someone mentioned that, feel free, thank you so much for joining, but I'm happy to answer a few more questions if there are any. In the meantime, here is my contact information one last time. Feel free to, to get in touch if you have any more questions.